Hello once again, and welcome to Geography 141, The Natural Environment. This is our first lecture video. We're going to be talking about geographic basics and starting with the very basics. We're going to be talking about, well, what exactly is geography? You notice be below that, I normally like to, when I teach this class in person, start out the class with a song, and essentially when the song ends, we know that it's time to begin class. And unfortunately, since I can't do that, I at least want to still bring that kind of idea into this, these, these lectures, these videos. And so here, uh, because we are talking about the very basics of what geography is, we're talking about essentially our ABCs of geography. I think it makes sense that the song for this video and really this whole module becomes ABC uh, by the Jackson 5. And so going, you know, actually in starting uh, for this class, I just want to re-emphasize that I have a couple main broader goals for this class. Um, the first being to, for by the end of the course, to have you at least have progressed or improved upon your critical thinking skills, whether that is specifically within you know, geography or kind of just more generally uh, the, the skills that are, in, are encompassed within what we normally think of as critical thinking, but also, I mean, specifically to the course content itself, having some basic understandings of our science, and as I emphasized in uh, the, really the, the beginning, even video prior to this one, and of having more of this broad appreciation and understanding for science, um, and kind of also the, since we're going to be using most of common materials that are out uh, either in the Creative Commons or public domain, having that, you know, um, really recognizing the value of that and studying, uh, you know, the material that we have for this class. So, again, going back to that question, what exactly is geography? And we can think of, if we actually break this word down in the English language, um, it really derives from originally a Greek word, an ancient Greek work, word, where if we break the, the word apart into its two parts, geo being the first part, which uh, literally kind of translated coming through time means earth, and then graphy meaning to study or to write about or, you know, to graph to actually create some sort of visual representation of earth. I um, mean, we can kind of translate that roughly in a historical sense as something like to study the earth. Um, and so you know, a, a definition that I really will emphasize, or at least that I've chosen more, more generally for us, for this class is that second one that we see here in the you know, geography being the science of understanding the distribution of phenomena on Earth. That's a very broad definition, but um, we can you know, kind of more encompass that down into a simple phrase. Oftentimes, um, the some people in the geography department here at the University of Oregon even like to say, you know, the geography is you know, geography is something like the why of where. And so, um, you know, that's a very simple phrase that really, you know, capture can capture a lot under but just to emphasize that geography is trying to understand you know, on earth if we're studying the earth kind of where things are and why they're or why and how, how they have ended up there and so another phrase another term that you'll hear frequently invoked when we're talking about geography is this uh, term spatial and just to note that that refers to the nature and character of space and when I mean space here I'm not referring to outer space so things outside of earth I actually mean like space as in as you might think of as an area or you know, you know the, an area across the earth's surface or a distance um, or kind of you know, this this measurement um, in, uh, of things across the earth's surface and the distribution, the distribution of things across earth's surface or really anywhere that we encompass within earth whether it's its surface or its atmosphere as we'll talk about through this course so noting that particularly this class is not geography in, in one sense and it's a very broad sense because geography is so, so broad and, and encompassing many different uh, characteristics but it specifically focuses on a subset of geography that is called physical geography, and that being, once again, kind of the science and understanding of specifically Earth's processes and the resulting distribution of phenomena on Earth, which we can further break down into a series of categories that fall under physical geography. So we'll be at least touching base on all of these that I have listed here. So climatology and meteorology will be our first few weeks of this course. Uh, really much of the material that we cover before the midterm so studying both kind of shorter term what we term weather um, you know so shorter time span 
uh, circulation of processes in the atmosphere, um, and also climatology, or client studying climate in longer time spans, um, and it kind of averages over time, uh, and processes related to that for long span time periods uh, of core climate. And then really much of those, those latter three, biogeography, so the studying of plants and animals, their spatial distribution on Earth, um, both in present and historically. Geomorphology, studying Earth's landforms, how they change over time, how, um, and hydrology, kind of related to that, the studying of, of distribution and movement of water on Earth. Well, we'll touch on those mainly in the second portion of this course, really between the midterm and the final exam. So again, this is all what we're talking about within physical geography. So to note, again, there, this is just one of the main branches with under uh, geography. Generally, really another main branch oftentimes recognized as human geography. So that would be more something like the science of understanding human processes and the resulting distribution of phenomena on Earth. So things like economics, politics, kind of what are the spatial components of that? How, is the, how are those things distributed across Earth's surface? Um, would more fall under a human geography category. And not to say that we won't engage with those at all in this class, to note that um, I will at times be bringing those in in little parts, but our main emphasis throughout this class will be on the physical geography, the kind of the, the Earth's processes, physical environmental processes of Earth. And again, we will bring in enough human geography components just to you know try and understand a little bit, well, why are we so interested in these physical processes, what impact they have on us, and then why you know, would we want to consider that and really want to know those things you know, for our own well-being or safety or whatever it may be. So kind of comparing with the setup here, you know, this class to note its name is not actually Introduction to Physical Geography or something like that, which oftentimes this course usually is named at many other universities, but we actually note that the University of Oregon has named this class the Natural Environment. This is actually one place where we can bring in a little bit of our critical thinking skills from this very first lecture. So when we actually think about this term, the natural environment, as I picked out here, and then we start looking, actually, you know, if we, if we start observing the world around us, you know, so I've provided you just a couple images here that I've also put in the first lesson, you know, but you could go and look at many images across Earth's surface, for example, since you know, Earth's surface is generally where we live um, and, and where we think of the most. But you know, in both of these images that we see here, to some extent, is this environment truly natural? Or what does natural even mean? Uh, it would be questions we can start asking. And I don't want to go down that whole path too far because that could be a whole class um, you know, lectures to a whole class in itself, thinking about what exactly uh, what we mean by when we use the term nature, or what is natural. Um, actually, you know, large, extensive volumes of books have been written on this, and that's not a, our immediate goal here. But I want when I'm asking you to look at it through these pictures, is actually to note that in both of these pictures that I show you, with this one on the right here of Mount Ararat, and uh, in, in this is actually taken uh, in, in in Turkey. Um, you know, there's a variety of countries um, in around the world where this picture is shown from, um, and then um, kind of so we can note you know there is human you know built structures within this. You know even in the bottom left hand corner, we're looking at a relatively quote unquote natural environment in this tropical rainforest. Um, you know we are seeing a path down here in the forefront of this image, and so you know just to just to note that much of our environments that we start to look at around Earth are already, you know, or to some extent, impacted by humans. You know, they've, they've been modified by humans. And so, you know, just to critical thing, well, what does the natural environment mean? Is it something that's not untouched, that is untouched by humans? Because to a large extent, that doesn't exist on our Earth's surface anymore. And so we will be accounting, once again, just like in the last slide, in terms of relation to human geography, to some extent for social factors and, and you know, human influence coming into this. And so more broadly, that's that just ties back to I, I'm hoping through this course, you know, even though I recognize many people maybe simply just trying to get through this and they're like, oh, I want to think about is, you know, getting through this course to get my science credit and I want to get out. But I hope you take a little bit of time and to you know actually think through some of the things of this course and to say well why is this important to me why should I actually consider thinking about this and in, in recognizing 
some of the things that we've talked about this class and, and how they become very relevant in my own life. All right, so some of the main tools then that will be led on through this class, and we're going to talk really through this first module, are the scientific method, which we'll cover in the next lecture and lesson, as well as maps. Uh, and you know, you know, two maps you probably know I think of as geography. You know, if you think of geography, just more generally as a word, maps may be one of the first thing that come to mind in how we depict Earth's surface or generally the earth, things around Earth. And so we'll be covering those as well um, and really trying to get to this heart of how physical geography generally is all about addressing how processes um, in turn result in series of patterns on the Earth's surface. Once again, we're looking at these images here. You know, if we look, start looking around where we live, you know, both of these images are taken from the state of Oregon, whether it's the three sisters um, you know, as part of the Cascade Mountain Range as, you know, that if we were to go were to go to up into the mountains to the east of us here in Eugene, uh, you know, if we, you know, how, actually think, okay, what are the processes? You know, what are actually the things that created this pattern, quote unquote, that we see? You know, the landscape pattern. Why do we see mountains in these certain places? Um, you know, what are the landforms that we start to see there? You know, and similarly, you know, more if we look to the atmosphere around it, why do we start to see you know, certain weather patterns in certain places in Oregon? Um, and, and, and not in other parts of the state, just to focus on Oregon or just, you know, all the way up to the whole earth itself. And similarly, or on the left-hand side, you know, we're actually looking at certain types of landscapes, so rivers as we see in our picture here on the bottom left of the Mackenzie River that runs um, and joins up with the Willamette River here in Eugene. You know, what are, again, the processes, the actual, you know, kind of physical processes behind that that lead to seeing rivers that look a certain way or, you know, any type of landform or any type of, you know, generally feature around Earth that we might observe, why do they look the way they do? That is what we will be working on throughout this course. I look forward to working with you on throughout this course.